The episode begins with Toya waking up from his sleep and finding his girlfriend, Yamina, next to him. He is shocked because he went to sleep alone last night and no one has ever slept with him before. Furthermore, he didn't sleep well as no one has slept beside him before. Yamina woke up from her sleep and Toya asked her what she was doing in his bed. She told him that she became his wife, so she stayed with him. However, he couldn't believe that they are married, as he has been recently focused on the state and hasn't paid attention to her at all. Yamina left to prepare breakfast for him, and then Toya went to the park, still shocked by Yumina's actions. In the park, a bird approached Toya and informed him that it just received news from one of the birds they sent for exploration. They found something described as a pitch-black pyramid made of an unfamiliar material. It resembles the ruins of the alchemist's wing, and it could be a real treasure. Toya wonders about the location of these ruins and gathers all his donations in one place. He informs them that he plans to go to Babylon, which is located on the western side of the Sandora Kingdom. The island is much smaller than Bernheld, so this would be their fourth Babylon. If luck is on their side, he hopes it will be the storage this time, maybe the amber. However, his girlfriend suggests that the library might be suitable, and she would be very happy if it turns out to be so. Alternatively, they could try the tower or conduct research. Toya informs them that Ind mentioned it's only a matter of time before an advanced foe appears. Therefore, he hopes to obtain frame gears soon. Then Toya and his friends head into the forest, where the ruins seem to be right in front of them. They don't find anyone who has ever lived there, which means there are many animals and monsters wandering around. They quickly encounter a huge monster, and they all get ready for anything that may happen. Toya asks his small bear, Paula, not to fight with them because she's too small. The monster attacks Toya, and his girlfriend saves him by hitting one of the shots in its eye. Then his other friend uses the power of ice binding to restrain him with it. Afterwards, all of Toya's friends collaborate to kill him, but he was a very weak monster, not impressive at all. Despite being a beginner rank, he had tough skin that they could use for something. This angered Toya greatly because he couldn't do anything afterwards. Then he heard a voice coming from the other side and quickly ran to check the place, but his friends were faster and saw what was happening. They killed many monsters, and Toya can rely on all of them at any time. Paula persuaded Toya to go to this place before any of their friends saw them. Then they went to this pyramid and placed their hands on it, and they were transported inside. There, they found an instant teleportation circle to Babylon and talked to their friends that Toya found what he was looking for and will teleport immediately. The girls asked him to be more careful, and indeed, Toya instantly teleported to this place. This girl comes to him and tries to hit him with a big machine because he was the first to dodge her instant kill attack. Toya says, this girl is the director of Babylon, but she's tiny. Then he asks her who she is, and she answers that she is the director of Babylon and her name is Monica. She asks him to prove his strength to her. Then she attacks him, but he uses the sliding power, causing her to fall to the ground. She attacks him again, but he uses the shield power, causing her to fall again. She gets very angry and says, you surrendered and admitted that you're compatible. From this moment on, you'll follow my orders. The recording and genetic information storage are complete, and ownership of the amber will be transferred to him. Toya is very happy and then they enter the place, and he says that it's very spacious. She answers that spatial magic is used on the inner parts of the amber, so it's much bigger inside. Then Monica opens this door, and Toya is surprised, so he says, this is the original frame shield, so it's an old mode. Then he asks her to mount it, but she replies that he can mount it whenever he wants, even though it won't work, because it has no fuel. He asks her about the fuel it needs, and she tells him that it uses ether fluid as fuel, and if her memory doesn't fail her, the research director can create it. Toya then speaks in astonishment, saying, you mean we have to find the research lab to make it work? She replied, saying not to worry, as Flora might know. They then went to Flora, who said it's not impossible to make it, although what she can make here would be inferior to what the research lab's director can create. Then she asks about ether ore, which amplifies, stores, and releases magical energy. They need enchantment stones, and the girl hands them magical stones. Flora says, these are raw etheric stones. If we have an enchantment stone, we won't be able to price it. 
we can search for one using your mobile phone. Toya starts searching, and indeed, he finds places where these stones are located, including one in Braunheld. After that, we see Toya with the stones, and he asks Flora for her opinion. She answers that it's very big, but half of it should be sufficient. Then Toya goes to the large robot and says, only one more month until the ether fluid is complete. I'm very eager and don't want to wait any longer. After this, the two girls come to him to perform some light maintenance in this place because it has been over 5,000 years since this amber was used, but it's equipped with materials that prevent corrosion and deterioration. However, dust and some dirt still accumulate, so some light maintenance is necessary. But the redhead girl argues with him because she used to take care of the amber well. Then she asks him if he wants to try sitting on the captain's seat or not. At that moment, Toya becomes very happy with these words, and they go to see the captain's seat, where Toya sits on it and is very amazed. Then the girl told him that once he masters these buttons and programs, the rest will be just simple exercises. This robot is equipped with the latest devices in the world because it is linked to the commander's mind who operates it. Therefore, you need extensive experience to train on it and become a seasoned warrior. At that moment, Toya exclaimed how beautiful it is, but it will take a long time for him to get used to it. However, the trainer and the owner of the place assured him not to worry because they have already prepared a training unit for him. It works with magical power. Toya then started training and was very happy as the robot moved exactly as he wanted. Whenever he thought of something, the robot would act accordingly. Now the trainer will teach him how to lead in actual combat. It has been incredibly enjoyable. Let's go to the castle now, where there are many training rooms recommended by Toya so that everyone can train. During this period, we will work on producing units that send the actual frame in large quantities. We should have enough for everyone in the castle. We also need to be very alert to any enemy attacks. At that moment, the girl approached him sadly and asked him to marry her because she cannot live without him. Then she continued arguing and manipulating him until this responsible man arrived. Ah, how annoying she is, he said. She bothers the king, but the girl is very upset because her parents force her to marry another man, but she doesn't want to marry anyone other than Toya. Then Toya asked about her parents, and this responsible man told him that he is Prince de Bon, the first prince of the Leanhide Kingdom. However, the girl doesn't want to marry a mysterious man, she wants Toya, who has a kind heart. Prince de Bon has a very bad reputation in his treatment of women. He is a womanizer, and many girls, including herself, fell in love with him. Then they realize that he is a betrayer and a cheater. They also say that he is over 30 years old while the girl is only 15. At that time, Toya was greatly disturbed by this because he is a betrayer and a cheater. Then they informed the minister that they want to marry each other today, even though she has not reached the age of maturity. Toya was shocked by the situation. How could he do all of this? He claims that he fell in love with her at the social gathering, so the girl begs Toya to take her with him and treat her like his sister. Just staying by your side is enough. Toya tells her that he also opposes her marriage to such a foolish prince, and although it is a problem between the countries, he doesn't think he can solve it based on his personal decision. He believes that he needs to consult others. Then they go to the girls, and they inform Toya that there is no problem with him marrying her, and they are happy to have more people join them. Toya tells them to put this issue aside for now. Now the question is how to reject Prince de Bon's marriage proposal. The girl tells him that she can simply refuse him by telling him that she will be Toya's bride. The servant informs them that this could cause some problems. She heard that Prince de Bon is vengeful, and in the worst case scenario, he could sever the relations between his country and ours. The girl tells them that she cannot cause problems for others. They think together about a suitable way to solve this problem. One of the girls suggests that the radical solution would be to crush that prince because the foolish prince who acts selfishly harms everyone. He is also a despicable and perverted man in his thirties who manipulates women. He should be eliminated immediately. The user asks Toya how exactly she plans to kill him, and she informs them that another girl will create a sniper weapon. Another person suggests a little bit of potassium cyanide to extinguish his light, and another says they only need one blow with a pipe wrench. 
Toya gets annoyed with these foolish opinions and tells them that, in any case, let's start by visiting the Duke. We can tell him about our feelings regarding this and let him think about something. Maybe there's something we can do together. They agree on that, and indeed, they go to the Duke, who tells them that he was also thinking about this matter. However, if you agree to marry Sua, then I will have some options at least. At that moment, all the annoyance of that stupid prince will be directed towards Braunhild. Toya mocks this opinion and tells him that we need to return to that stupid prince. If his reputation is bad, then the question is why he hasn't been expelled from the royal family. The duke tells him that Wardak, the prime minister of Lanehia, has influence, and I wouldn't be exaggerating if I said that this man holds all the power in Lanehia. Rumors suggest that their king is just a figurehead. Toya asks who this prime minister is, and the duke tells him that Wardak is from the same family as Queen Dakia, the mother of Prince Saphan. He takes advantage of that position to do as he pleases, and I've heard that the only good person in that family is the second prince. Toya is surprised that there is another prince besides the stupid prince, but he is a son of a concubine and seems to have been forced to live far from the palace in disgrace. But I've heard that he is a good man. Toya wonders if he has a different mother, then that means he is not from the Wardak bloodline. The duke tells him that the mother of the second prince was kept isolated due to illness, and there is no support for her. It seems that all the prince can do is barely keep her alive. Toya feels sad about this tragedy, and suddenly the servant enters and informs them that the envoy from Lanehia has arrived. The duke tells them that it seems their patience has paid off. Well, I have made my decision. I will officially refuse. The envoy enters and says, please forgive me for interrupting, but I came to receive your answer regarding the last proposal. The duke thanks him for making the journey and says, let's get straight to the point. We appreciate your gracious suggestion, but I am forced to decline. The reason is that my daughter has chosen another man for marriage. The envoy asks who that person is, and the duke points to Toya and says, His Majesty, the Grand Duke of Brunhild, Mochizuki Toya, is the man sitting in front of you. The envoy is astonished that this man is the Grand Duke of Brunhild. The envoy then kneels before Toya, but Toya stops him and tells him that he doesn't have to do that for him. They inform the envoy that they didn't expect to meet His Majesty here, and they thank the Lord for it. They have heard about the Duke's accomplishments from many places. The envoy apologizes for asking, but he wonders if it's true that the Duke can use instantaneous teleportation magic. Toya confirms it and the envoy begs him to save his mother. Toya tells him that he explained everything from the beginning and informs him that his name is Cloud Zephyr Lanehia, the second prince of the kingdom of Lanehia. Everyone is shocked to learn that he is the second prince. And with that, episode 7 comes to an end. Stay tuned for the next episode to find out what will happen between them and what Toya will do with this prince. We hope you subscribe to the channel and activate the bell notification to receive updates.